My name is Nir Barzila. I'm a professor of medicine and genetics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and the director of the Institute for Aging Research. I'm 55 years old and I'm very much aware of my aging. I'm aware of the aging of all the people around me. In my family, I don't have longevity genes. In fact, my parents did not live long and they are both sick for the last five to eight years in their life and it's heartbreaking. On the other hand, in my wife's family, there is longevity. This is uh, Frida Buchwalter, my wife's grandmother. She died last year at age 102, but she was healthy throughout her life until two weeks before her death. You see her in this picture in her 100th birthday. At that time, the guy she was dating was 85, and she complained that they're getting a little bit too young for her. But she really demonstrated to me what's so fascinating about those people and how they must be an example, a biological example for something so significant. How old are you now? 96, 96 and three quarters. Okay, I want to go to my... We started the longevity gene study in 1998. We recruited to our study 500 centenarians, over 500 centenarians now. We also recruited their uh, offspring, their children, because their children are enriched with longevity gene. The goal of this longevity gene study is to understand how centenarians live so long. And we selected people that are 100 years old and yet they have full life and they enjoy their life to the fullest. And this is in spite of the fact that some of them are smoking and some of them are obese. What is it in their genetic makeup that allows them to get to this age and be healthy at this age. I should emphasize that our goal is coupled with the quality of life. We really want people to just live healthier rather than get age-related disease and suffer through them. You know, when you want to do a genetic discovery, you're not going to go to the streets of New York and take just anyone because there's a huge diversity in our genome. You try to work with a very homogeneous kind of population, and we chose to work with the homogeneous population of Ashkenazi Jews. So we went to those homes and we started asking them questions relating to their environment, their lifestyle. And then we took their uh, blood, their plasma, their DNA to the labs and started working on that to connect between those people and the biology. Some of our initial findings were really very striking. Uh, first of all, we really showed that longevity is in the families. The second thing that was uh, striking is that a lot of our centenarians and their children had very high levels of the good cholesterol, which we call HDL cholesterol, and it was often above 80 and 100 and even up to 150. Now, realize that in the average for the population is 45 for men and 55 for women. So this is very high. To date, we have found several mutations or variants in the genes that are associated with longevity. And the genes I want to highlight are CTP, APOC3, adiponectin. Now, the first two are cholesterol genes. So the CTP, for example, is protective against cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer, and diabetes. The APOC3 gene is protective against uh, diabetes and heart disease. The adiponectin gene is protective against diabetes and inflammation. So just as it's important to do discovery in homogeneous population, it's important to show that it really applies to the rest of the population. I think the best example is a study we did with uh, doctors Amy Saunders and Richard Lipton, where we took one of those longevity genes that, that uh, we identified, and we just looked if they apply also to the Bronx population that includes the white and the African-American and Hispanic. And we actually showed that in this population, it prevents this, gen this genetic makeup 
uh, prevents Alzheimer and cognitive uh, decline by about 70%. So yes, we are translating those findings to the rest of the population. And most of us do not have longevity genes. For most of us, our aging is 80% modulated by the environment and 20% by genes. You may be wondering how this study helps you and everybody around us. The results of this research can be directly translated into development of a drug. Now, many people are saying, oh, genetic research, does it mean we're going to have genetic treatment? No, the answer is not. We can have a drug therapy. We can have a drug therapy will interfere and imitate exactly what those genes are doing. And in fact, there are several examples where the pharmaceuticals are developing a drug therapy for aging. One of them is based on our discovery of CTP a, a genotype. One of the drugs is in phase three trial in a pharmaceutical. So if everything continues to go as well, it will be out in the market in a, at the end of 2011, and it can be tested against a variety of age-related disease. Aging is the major risk factor for all the age-related diseases. So unless we're going to really understand what is the biology of aging, I think we're not going to do a dramatic advance unless we start thinking and modulating it. I hope that in our lifetime, we will be able to use medicine in order to prevent the age-related diseases of aging and improve our quality of life as we age. We have a lot to do in this field, but the 100 years old are an inspiration and they are showing us we can get to this maximal lifespan that we probably have that is about 100 years old and we can get there healthy and we can get there with good quality of life. And I think it's our obligation as scientists to do that. Many people are working with us on this program, and this is just one of the programs under the umbrella of the Institute for Aging Research. And so we're lucky to have investigators like Aviv Bergman, and Yushin Su, and Gilad Smon, and Jill Crandall, and Mimi Kim, and Swapnil Rashpatak, and Richard Lipton, and Joe Vergaze and all their teams uh, in an effort to identify those longevity genes. Beside the people that I just talked about, there are two incredible scientists that have uh, other program projects and are interacting also with a large group of people. One is Ana Maria Cuervo, and the second is Jan Vig. And all of us together are really doing the whole breadth of aging research and I'm absolutely grateful to all those people.